Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about water. Because something unusual, something extremely extraordinary has been recently discovered about water itself. And we're not talking about ice water or water in some strange states, we're talking about liquid water, the water that's present on the planet. And what recently has been discovered suggests that water itself seems to possess two different states depending on the temperature. And that is something that nobody really expected to find. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Because as you can probably imagine, water is probably one of the most important substances for life at least on planet Earth. And this is something that we actually need to understand really well if we do one day want to discover some kind of other life somewhere out there in order to understand the origins of life and of course how life evolved on planet Earth. So first of all, we know that water is already kind of strange. And by the way, when I say water, I don't mean just liquid water. I mean water itself as a molecule and as an element on the periodic table of elements. For example, this is the only known substance to us where the solid state, the ice as it's known, actually floats on the liquid state. In pretty much every other known case, the liquid state normally floats on top of the solid state. So this is, for example, the case with things like methane, ethane, and so on. But for some unknown to us reasons, in case of water, the ice is, well, it's less dense. It seems to be able to float on the surface of the liquid state of water. Now, obviously, this is something we've all learned in school and something we kind of all take for granted, but with other liquids, this is not the case at all. For some reason, the liquid water, when it freezes, when it becomes solid, starts to expand. And this is not really easy to explain. Also, when it comes to things like boiling or essentially becoming gas, normally the more molecular weight the molecule has, the higher its boiling point. So for water in this case, we would expect it to have much, much lower boiling point, but its boiling point is extremely high, suggesting that it has much stronger bonds than some of the other molecules. But that's of course some of the things that you might have already learned in school and some of the things that you might already understand, because we know that overall water does seem to be a very strange substance. But these strange facts about water is not really something we can answer right now. There's still a lot of things we don't understand about the substance. There are, however, things that we've all learned in school, which is, of course, the states of matter, the states of water. We probably all still remember that we are taught that water has three states, ice, liquid water, and gas. And in this case, you can actually see two of them. You see the clouds above and you see the liquid water, which is the ocean here. But what they didn't teach us in school is that water actually has a lot more states, way, way more than we can actually list in this video. For example, we've already discovered close to 20 different states of ice, basically the solid form, and they all seem to be different depending on the structure of the molecules inside the ice itself. For example, this form right here, known as ice 10, forms at really, really high pressures and creates a somewhat interesting, very symmetric ice compared to normal ice we see on Earth. And most of these ice forms are normally formed in usually somewhat extreme conditions or in many cases in outer space. So for example, ice we find on comets or on other planetary objects structurally and possibly even functionally is not really the same ice as we have here on Earth. The ice on Earth is very unique and very different from the things we find in outer space. And these different forms of ice have been discovered for many, many years now, and we're probably going to be discovering a lot more of them in the future. But in this case, this is not particularly difficult to explain. As the water solidifies, as it becomes solid, water molecules can actually assume different types of shapes. Like not so long ago, only a couple of years ago, the Japanese scientists discovered that water can actually create this extremely light type of ice, the so-called ultra-density ice that the scientists also refer to as aero ice, mostly because it's very, very light compared to the typical ice we find on planet Earth. But that's for ices. On the opposite side of the spectrum, if we start warming up the water and if we make it extremely hot and extremely energized, we can also create what's known as plasma water. And we've discovered at least one potential planet where the atmosphere might be filled with this plasma water. And this is water that's essentially more closer to fire than it is to actual substance, to actual water. And so there are a lot of these extreme examples to show you that water has a lot of different states, many of which are obviously not taught in schools. But here's the thing though, what about the liquid water? turns out that even the liquid water is extremely surprising and completely unexpected in what it can do. It turns out that the liquid water on our planet has two states, and this is something we had no idea existed until, well, basically only a few months ago. 
because all of this came from this particular study you can find in the description below. And turns out all of this starts happening as you start warming up the water, somewhere between 40 and 60 degrees Celsius or 104 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, the water starts acquiring these unusual properties it did not have when it was colder. It literally starts switching between two different liquid states, and both liquid states, the colder water and the warmer water, have very different physical properties that can be calculated, measured, and can most likely affect other systems around them. And all of this starts happening as soon as water reaches that temperature of about 40 degrees Celsius. So first of all, around 50 degrees Celsius, the refraction of water, the refractive index as it's known, changes to the point where it becomes observable. Refraction in this case refers to the property of various substances where they actually change the angle of incoming light when the light goes from one medium to another. And it looks like at around 50 degrees Celsius the refractive index of liquid water changes as well, as if it became something a little bit different from what it used to be. And then, around 53 degrees Celsius, it starts to also change its conductivity. And although normally conductivity in water can be changed by adding, for example, different salts, in this case we're talking about pure water. And the pure water also changes conductivity once it reaches a certain temperature, around 53 degrees in this case. Now, one property of water that's very unusual and also kind of hard to explain is the so-called surface tension. It's basically how strong the molecules hold on to each other to create a kind of a, almost like a film on top of the water. It's not really a true film, but it's what we refer to as the surface tension. And this also changes, quite surprisingly, around the temperature of about 57 degrees. And although in this case, maybe that's something to do with the fact that there's now more energy in the water because of the heat, it still is extremely difficult to explain. And then around 64 degrees Celsius, it finally changes the last property, which is thermal conductivity. So in other words, by the time it reaches that 64 degree mark, it has changed at least four different properties, in some sense almost like becoming a completely different substance from what it used to be when it was colder. It practically becomes a different liquid. And this is not something anyone expected. This is not something the scientists actually were expecting to discover at all. But most importantly, this has huge implications on life and also evolution of life. Remember, today we believe that life on Earth evolved approximately three and a half, maybe even four billion years ago. And this is when Earth was very different. It was a lot warmer. The water was also a lot warmer. And chances are it was actually much warmer than possibly even 64 degrees Celsius. In other words, the liquid water that was present on early Earth was very, very likely in that other state we just kind of discovered. The thermal conductivity, the electrical conductivity, refractive index, and surface tension were most likely a lot different from what they are today. And in some sense, maybe this is actually what helped life to evolve. We obviously can't really explain what exactly it was that helped life to evolve, but it does seem like maybe this actually has some sort of a correlation. The different state of liquid water present on early Earth may have assisted early life on Earth to create all of the necessary components for later life to evolve. Now, this is not something we can easily prove just yet, but there is definitely a lot of implications in this discovery. And although we don't really have any good explanations yet, the potential explanation here is really all to do with the unusual bond that water uses to essentially maintain its shape. The bond we refer to as the hydrogen bond. And because this bond is used by so many other organic molecules, including things like proteins, and because it's so extremely important in regulation and maintenance of activity inside the living cells, for example, this of course also suggests that whatever was happening on early Earth when water was warmer was probably extremely different from what's happening on Earth today. And so now it's actually super important to take into consideration the temperature of liquid water on potential other objects we discover somewhere out there. Because water seems to have very different effects in very different temperatures, all of this officially has now become even more complicated than before. But what's really interesting here is that we keep discovering all of these incredible things about water and we keep realizing how absolutely incredible this substance is. It seems to be absolutely unique in the universe, in all of its properties, in all of its abilities, but most importantly, of course, in its ability to create organic life and to sustain it for many, many billions of years. And this is, of course, one of the many reasons we're studying all of this, because we want to understand how life was created, how life evolved, and what exactly was the role of water in all of this. But anyway, 
It's a really, really exciting discovery, probably one of the bigger discoveries of the last two years, but the implications of this discovery are not really going to be instantly apparent to us. It's probably going to take a lot of studies and a lot of new discoveries to try to figure out what all of this means. Anyway, on that note, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.